Hey guys, welcome back to World of Tanks. My name is Bruce and today I want to present an advanced autoloader tutorial. What do you need in order to master autoloader tanks? Let's find out in this video. In this video I will give you 10 golden tips for advanced autoloader gameplay. You can consider this video as the successor of my first autoloader tutorial which is linked right here. So if you haven't watched the first video you might want to consider watching it first and thereafter return to this video. Anyway in this video I will show you how to master autoloader gameplay in a tank which is really difficult to play the Batchet 25T. So let's start with the first game and see how you can master autoloader tanks. Alright, first game in the Badger 25T. And instead of um, taking a look at the map, let's talk about tip number one. And that is, use your firepower to rush into a position. Now, adversary tanks know about your clip potential and will most likely not try to compete. And if they do, you are superior and able to win the strategic position. Important on the other hand is, before rushing into a position, you need to make a thorough assessment whether it is worth it. And so in this game, we are top tier and there's no light tank in the game. Plus, we are the fastest tank on the battlefield and if we drive correctly onto the hill, there's only, there's only a short period of time in which the adversary tanks can actually hit us and so my decision is to rush the hill at the beginning of the game now usually i would stop here and wait and would um, give this chance to the other to the adversary tanks and simply try to um, to hit them and to reduce shots but in this case it is differently and i want to rush the hill all right look at this there's another tank coming with me however um, we can easily finish him off and now, yes, we have lost quite some HP, but we have managed to win the strategic position. Plus, I still have four shots in my autoloader clip. And so it is super, super difficult for the remaining team to push me. And now it is time to clip out the other tanks. And that brings me to tip number two. Do not, tr do not try to blindly empty the whole clip. Always set the reload time of the adversary tanks in mind. So we take two shots on the T30 and then we relocate. And as you can see, we just evaded the shot of the gorilla. Do not blindly empty your whole clip. Do not be exposed too long to the adversary tanks because the longer you are exposed to adversary tanks, the more likely it is that they will hit you and that you will lose HP. And so it is imperative to only use a couple of shots of your autoloader clip so that you do not take damage from the adversary tanks. Rather make one shot, rather make two shots instead of getting shot by the adversary team. That is extremely important. So always have the reload time of the adversary tanks in mind and only deliver so many shots so not to receive damage. Incorporate the time, and that is also super important, incorporate the time that you need to fall back into cover into this calculation. This is also extremely important. Because yes, the reload time of the Badger is 2.5 seconds, but you need at least one or let's say one and a half seconds to fall back into cover. So this makes about three seconds. So most of the time, as you can see, you can make two shots with an intra clip reload of about, let's say two and a half seconds, but not more. If you have a tank like the, like the TVP, which has an even shorter intra clip reload, you might be able to squeeze out a, a third shot but let's say if you have a tank which has even more reload time then you might only want to take you only might you only might want to take let's say one shot before you fall back into cover so this is super important all right um like, can we get another shot onto the is7 yes we can and look at this 3.5k damage in the very first three minutes of the game is an excellent result and so as you can see it is i mean that's a that's a given it is important to to win a strategic position and the good thing about the badger for example is it brings the mobility and it brings the firepower because it's an autoloader tank to actually play aggressively at the beginning of the game so if you play an autoloader tank you want to use the firepower advantage that you have compared to single shot tanks in order to play aggressively 
when conditions permit. And so those two tips are extremely important at the beginning of the game, at the beginning of this video. All right, so let's see if those tanks want to advance. And if they want, then I will be able to punish them. And actually, this video shows why it is so important to win to win the hill on Glacier, because you have full control over the heavy lane. Um, all right, so I think they are smart enough to not advance. And so as it is already A to 2, it is time to further advance and to get more damage. And here you go. So we want to simply flank those adversary tanks and move around the corner. And then, yep, we get hit by the TNH. Nice. Yeah, okay. I think that's the Japanese tank destroyer. Yep, we take a shot, but you know what? We have an autoloader clip, so let's simply finish him off. And then now let's... Ah, here you go. Let's simply deliver our last three shots into the poor M103 and he has no chance whatsoever. Okay, and now I uh, make a little mistake because as you can see, yeah, the WZ is approaching. I should have evaded out of the situation forward. So I should have moved to the M103 because now it took me too long. And so the WZ111 QL can simply finish me off. But you know what? Uh... 5k damage more than more than 5k damage more than 1k assisting damage an excellent result in the batch at 25t so let's simply jump into the next game okay here we are in the second game this time we're spawning on malinovka in the south and look at the scenario we are in a top tier match uh, sorry in a, in a tier 10 match however there's no light tank on this map and so it is certainly a dream scenario. So what do we want to do? We want to play aggressively at the beginning of the game, because as I said, we have the mobility in the batch head, plus we have the autoloader clip potential. So it is not easy for, for, a, for an adversary tank to push us out. And so we want to use this combination. So we want to proceed to the B5 position because it is extremely important in a super Super strong position. Actually, I would call it a strategic. Uh, sorry, sorry, a strategic position from which we can dominate the adversary team. So now let me show you how I advance into this position. So I go here, not to get spotted by tanks which are proceeding to the D five position, because now this little hill here is behind me at the D five position, and so. I'm only exposed to adversary tanks once I cross this little ridge line here. From now on, I am exposed. And as you can see, I already get a shot from the Centurion Action X. And he actually does not need to aim in because of his incredibly good gun, uh, gun handling. And so now I am in this position. And this brings me now... So I've made it into this strategic position. And this now brings me to tip number three. And that is stay alive until the end of the game. Don't play too aggressively at the beginning of the game and rather try to save HP. At the end of the game, you are able to simply clip out your opponents, at least if they have, let's say, already lost some of their of their HP. And so this ability makes your tank super strong compared to others. So my goal in this situation is don't lose any HP. Exploit on this strategic position on the one hand, but then on the other hand, do not lose XP and so what you see me do is I only want to move out of cover and test whether I get spotted or not. All right, there's another tank spotted. Excellent. So you know what? Let's simply. Okay, where did this shot go? <laughs> okay, no problem whatsoever. We simply want to um, move up here and see and make sure that we do not get spotted. So, oh, actually, we want to check out whether we get spotted, and that is the case. And so, as you can see, now, in this situation, if you blindly move out and position yourself on top of this little um, this little hill, and if you get spotted, you will most likely get taken out instantaneously. So, it is super, super important to play smart in your autoloader tank and simply check out whether you get spotted, and then use this information to decide whether you can actually go into the bush or not there you go one shot and this all as i said needs to be done in order to save hp because especially in an autoloader tank 
you want to have HP at the at the at the end of the game that you can consciously trade and um, basically use your clip potential to clip other tanks out at the end of the game. Because keep in mind, in an autoloader tank, you can always get a rather decent result. One clip is enough to get a somewhat let, let's say an average. Okay, I'm actually as you can see I'm spotted because another tank shot at me so if you make at least one clip you get an average result in your in your auto loader tank and so you want to stay alive until the end of the game i cannot stress that enough okay so now i think it is time to move into the bush and once again we want to play cautiously and now here go and want to try to spot other tanks so this thing is spotted now can somebody of our team shoot onto this tank no maybe not but maybe we can get a shot okay we unfortunately we only track him and as you heard me in the previous game after this shot i instantaneously want to fall back so not to be exposed to other tanks for too long because i once again do not want to lose hp now the game appears to be a bit boring but once again i'm playing super super cautiously because i want to do two things i want to exploit this position but i certainly do not want to lose my hp because i will need them at the end of the game all right um let's see so looks like our team is on the defensive side on the hill and I want to use my badget with my CVS in order to spot those tanks. The Leopard one. Here you go. He, yeah, actually, yes, he spotted me. So, as you can see, as soon as he moved out, I expected to be spotted, and I, I, uh, um, I drove back, and actually, as six cents takes three seconds to to uh, to come on i was right to fall back into cover so let me see so as soon as you spot another tank you should expect that you are also spotted by this tank now let me see okay so once again i spot a tank yep and i'm spotted by the leo one but as i fall back into cover i don't get shot so it looks like our team has has won the hill and so now it is time to spot the remainder of the adversary team and this brings me to tip number four don't focus on your autoloader clip potential too much for the most part you will not be able to employ the whole clip anyway as i just said and rather also include the other strength of your tank into your gameplay and talking about the badger 25t it's certainly the mobility but it's certainly also the spotting ability and so in this situation we simply do not want to like our our priority and our focus is not to clip one single tank but it is to use the spotting ability of our tank in this situation in order to spot for our team now so we waited until all our team have managed to advance so that they can take those tanks under fire that we want to spot and so now for us it is time to move forward and to spot the adversary tanks and so as you can see this gives us the lovely nice and sweet spotting damage here you go another tank is spotted this one okay and here you go and okay so this tank pushes us wants to push us out but here you go this is where our firepower helps us out because with the badger 25t you have five shots which deal 390 damage and so this tank has simply no chance in pushing us out in fact we can actually clip him out when he tries to push us out this is the strength of an autoloader tank and look at the stats um short of 3k damage and about yeah, short of 5k spotting damage so approximately uh, what is it 7.5k damage combined so an excellent result in the badger 25t and let's now jump into the next game 
Okay, third game. This time we spawn on fjords in the east and it's always the same thing in the bad chat. This thing gives you the mobility and the firepower to play aggressively if conditions permit. And so from this side, conditions certainly permit us to play aggressively and to win the strategic position. So what we want to do is we want to rush into the middle. However, we do not want to blindly rush into this position, but we want to see whether we get support from our team. Now take a look at matchmaking and notice that there's only one light tank in the game. And so we'll see how it goes. Lo looks like the MX-13 is not going to the middle. And so my decision here is to rush into this position because I think it is very important to have control over the hill. Plus my tank is super fast. So yep, the only tank which is able to take a shot is the 8th Centurion Action X. He's not so fast, however, he has an incredible snapshot capability. And as you can see, as we get support, it's the right decision to move into this strategic position. So this is what you can and what you should do with the Badger 25T. However, keep in mind, do not blindly rush into those positions because then you will be taken out of the game. All right, so let's see how we can or whether we can exploit this situation. Okay, so first victim will be the T95. Now this brings me to tip number five. Always try to track your opponents. With an auto looter, you have the chance to retrack your opponents. So use this opportunity to the max extent possible. Now in this situation, I actually was a bit lucky to track the T95. But in general, you always should strive to track and then retrack your opponent. This is especially useful against tank destroyers as they will not have the chance to turn around their, their gun and their tank once they have been retracked and used their repair kit. So this is super important. You can really use this to your, to your, uh, to your benefit in an autoloader tank. All right, looks like our team is making pressure and we have the perfect situation because from uh, this position and from the northern side we can get crossfire onto the tanks in the rear however as i have lost quite some hp i now want to play a bit more defensively because once again i want to preserve my hp until the end of the game when i really need them so let me go can we get one more shot bam nice and we even uh, cause a fire to the adversary light tank to the manticore and Okay, let's see. Let me see. <clears throat> All right. Um, looks like the object 277 is re-pushing the middle. Meanwhile, we can get an excellent shot onto the um, Leopard 1. Nice. And get three shots in our magazine. Can we get one more shot? No, he is. All right. So, you know what? Let's reload the our clip. Oh, okay, and that was actually... <laughs> Uh, I thought it would be a, uh, a good time to reload the clip and now I wanted to tell you tip number six which is reload your clip whenever it's time available and I, I thought time is available but it's actually not so we have to wait until we are uh, until our clip is reloaded so my tip number six is to reload your clip whenever time is available after you have been spotted you want to wait about 10 seconds anyway so that you are not spotted anymore so if you reload and wait 10 seconds, the remaining reload time of your clip is only an additional 20 seconds. So most of the time, if you if you want to move from one flank to another one, you should you should go ahead and reload your clip. Because if you reload your clip in, in such a situation, you basically do not lose any time. And when you start to re-engage your opponents on the other side of the map, you always start with the full clip, i.e. with superior firepower. So that is my tip for you. It actually didn't work out in this situation, but I think it's uh, in general um, something very important to mention. So, okay, we want to wait until our clip has once again reloaded. We already made um, more than 3k, 3.5k damage and so now it is time to simply play aggressively once again 9 to 4 so the game is won and now 
it is time to move forward aggressively in order to make more damage. Now, one thing, and this is actually tip number seven, is always keep in mind, always be aware of the downsides of your tank. You have a high firepower compared, or a higher firepower compared to a single shot tank. However, on the other hand, this strength is compensated by some weaknesses. So analyze those weaknesses so that your adversaries cannot leverage on them. And in the Badger 25T, this actually means you have no armor whatsoever, plus your reload time is long, your reload time of the clip, plus your gun handling is lackluster. At least two tanks like, for example, the TVP or let's say the Leopard 1. So always be aware of the downsides of your tanks, of your tank. And this is also true for, for example, for tanks like the MX-50B. Yes, you have a clip, you are an autoloader tank and you have some strength, but most of the time this, those, this strength is accompanied by some weaknesses, so keep that in mind. All right, another fantastic game with more than 7K combined in the bed chat. And let's now take a look at the last game. All right, last game in the Badger 25T. We are spawning on Prokhorovka, another fantastic map for this tank. In a tier 10 matchup, and there's one light tank. And so what do we want to do? Well, on this map, I like to go to the zero lane with the medium tank, especially because light tanks will most likely play on the one, two, and three lanes. So on the left-hand side of the map, um, actually, from our point of view, it's the right-hand side. And so I do not want to get exposed to the adversary EBR-105 too early. And then later on, once the EBR-105 is dead, I can exploit my spotting abilities in the Badger 25T. So let's see how it goes. As you can see, the Leopard 1 is also proceeding to the left-hand side. And that brings me to tip number 8. Don't push or defend a flank on your own. Because if your clip is empty, you have a very long reload time and you are very vulnerable. So, or you're more vulnerable actually than any other tank in the game. That is the downside of an autoloader tank. So what you want to get is you want to get support by your team. From one tank, better would be two or three tanks, but you don't want to push a flank on your own. Now, notice how I spot this tank because I play with CBS. Now the Badger does have a good spotting ability, um, let's say from the get-go. And so if the adversary light tank is not on my flank, then I have the best spotting capability in the game, at least on this side of the map. And so I can move into this bush and I can be relatively sure that I can outspot the adversary tanks. And that is what I want to do right here in this situation. Now, see, okay, I can even cause a fire to the MX-30B, which is excellent. Notice how I always fall back into cover after I've taken one single shot, because once again, as I told you in the first game, I do not want to be exposed for too long in the game so that adversary tanks can cause damage to my position. I actually, already received damage from the MX-30B but I do not want to get any more damage by other tanks for example the Super Conqueror or um, other tanks which are playing in the middle so I always fall back after one single shot even though I am an autoloader tank this is crucial to understand if you want to play autoloader successfully all right so yep I fall back now it is time to reload our clip <laughs> because it is empty um, and now I can use the time that it takes to reload my clip to do something else. So if you play in an autoloader tank, you do not want to stand in the same position, but you want to use the time in which your clip is reloading. And you can do two things. You can either change a flank or you can position yourself so that you spot other tanks. And that is what I'm doing right here. I'm positioning myself in this bush so that I can spot the tanks which appear in the middle so that our artillery can take them under fire. So that my so that the time that it takes for me to reload the clip is basically used and not um 
yeah so that it is basically used and um and that i can do something the game okay i'm thinking of right the leopard one has moved forward now take a look at which tanks are spotted now yes the batchet and the Brigetto 65 were not spotted but as the leopard one is 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 moving forward aggressively not taking any shots by adversary tanks i was pretty confident that those tanks the batchet and the Brigetto 65 are not positioned right here so i move into this bush to see whether i can spot those things and as i cannot spot them i'm pretty confident that they are also not at this portion of the map so and so i want to rush forward and appear by surprise and that brings me to tip number nine which is try to appear unexpected if you achieve to surprise your adversary tanks you will be able to get extra shots before you get shots in return this will help you to trade even more positively and so I can catch this Super Conqueror by surprise and this even gives me the possibility to get three shots and I'm actually not spotted because there's a, a lovely situation which is that there are two bushes in between me and the Super Conqueror and so well, it's actually only one bush I mean it's a knockdown tree which counts as, as a bush but um, the Super Conqueror is not transparent and so he cannot spot me so I can actually remain in this position and uh, simply reload my clippers so but the, the important fact is I caught the Super Conqueror by surprise and so I could basically um, squeeze out almost my whole clip and make damage and not get any shots in return. So in an autoloader tank due to your superior intra clip reload or basically I should say due to your superior reload time for each shot compared to a single shot tank you want to appear by surprise in order to get only a very few shot a very few amount of shots in return okay now um okay i'm spotted but now it is time as you can see we are surrounding the remaining tanks and now it is time to move forward so that i get more spotting damage at the end of the game here you go um and let me tell you tip number 10. so Okay, I get spotting damage, which is fantastic. So tip number 10 is, um, if you circle a tank, and I think you you might have seen this in my in my first um, autoloader tutorial, and if not, feel free to watch this video. So if you circle a tank with using auto-aim, take a look at the pen marker and only shoot when the pen marker is green. Avoid shooting the face of the strong... the the, the Avoid shooting the strong frontal portion of the armor of the adversary tank because um, then you will not make any damage. So if you circle tank, then uh, try to uh, take a look at the pen marker because I see so many players basically simply um, using auto aim and then shoot at the adversary tank, but they do not make any damage because what auto aim does is it aims at the central portion of the adversary tank. And if you hit the frontal portion, the frontal central portion of the adversary tank that this is where the where the armor is superior all right so in this game we made uh yeah 3.9k damage 4.2k assisting damage so in the end more than 8k combined in the batcher 25t and i think if you follow those 10 tips then you will be more successful when you play autoloader tanks all right guys that was it for today with my advanced autoloader tutorial first of all here are my 10 tips all together now did you like the video do you like autoloader tanks in general and do you manage to play those tanks successfully just leave a comment in the comment section down below if you liked the video give it a thumbs up if you hated it give it a thumbs down consider subscribing to my channel and i see you next time in another world of tanks video